thy power. Hear my feeble plea, O oh Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Oh, Jesus, hold my hand. Oh, yes, I need the every hour. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy power. Oh, hear my feeble plea. Oh, Lord, look down on me when I need. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Come on, sing it with me today. Oh, Jesus, hold my hand. Oh, I need the every hour. And through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy saving power here. Oh, Lord, look down on me. Oh, when I kneel in prayer, I hope to meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Just one more time. Oh, Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need the every hour. praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is good to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today. I pray that you've had a wonderful week and I'm believing that we're going to have a great time together as we worship the Lord today. Amen. How many of you are wore out from VBS? Just checking. I wanted to make sure I was not the only one. So uh, I do just want to say, uh, before we go and open up in prayer today, I do want to say thank you to everyone that helped with VBS, whether it was that you were a teacher, if you helped with decorations, uh, especially those that were in the kitchen that were working so diligently uh, to help with the, uh, with the food, all that prepared. Brother Ronnie said that he appreciates you so much and thanks you so much and for each one of you when service <laughs> is over. He didn't actually use those words, but I could tell by his spirit that that's what he was trying to say. Right, it's amazing, yeah. It could be 18 cents, but, but he's got a check for you. It won't be signed, and it won't be from his account, but he'll have a check for you. No, but we, we appreciate everybody, and, and of course we also appreciate our uh, students that came whether they were kids or they were adults we appreciate all of you coming and and being a part and uh, they are actually not here today but I especially want to say thank you to uh, brother Ryan and sister Rochelle for all the hard work that they did getting everything together um, they decided that they've had enough church <laughs> and so they were skipping today but they'll be back Wednesday but no, that's not it. But uh, but we, we appreciate all the hard work that they did. We know it was a little bit different with the um, with just having the two days instead of a week. We're hoping next year we're going to be back to what we are used to. Um, kids, how many of you enjoyed the water slides? Right? Okay. And those of you who have heard but you did not see what your pastor did yesterday, um, I, well, you can check out Facebook, but just understand, you won't see it again. 
I, I do it one time, and then that's it. I'm done. So anyway, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's why you're still showing that you uh, have respect for me. So anyway, uh, we had a great time, and thank you so much, everybody who was involved with VBS. I, I do also just want to, uh, I have a card here from Sister Kathy. Uh, those of you who were not aware, uh, Brother Kenny passed away last week. We had his funeral, and she did want me to read this uh to the church real quickly and and there's uh, this plan I believe uh, she's brought uh, to the church but it says words cannot express my humble for the prayers kind words and compassion shown to me and my family by God's grace through it all we will remain strong truly Kathy Robert Ashley Madison Carter crown over so thank you to all of you who reached out to her uh, all of you that helped with food and everything and just continue to lift the family up in prayer as they go in this time of, of of loss and and just a time of adjustment we're going to go to the lord in prayer right now we actually opened up but i want to mention this again we opened up sunday school with praying for kate and for the baby those of you who don't know uh brother tony sister tanya's daughter kayla is pregnant and she has been struggling um they had to take her to the er yesterday however the good news is that the baby looks very strong and very healthy so we thank god for that uh the problem is, is that she is going to sounds like going to have surgery today anytime that a pregnant woman has surgery there's risk but we also know that when she goes in that or that it's not just the doctors in there but that the holy spirit's going to be with her and it's going to be keeping his hand upon her so we need to lift her up in prayer also we need to lift up brother legrand uh, he has been having some difficulties today sister belinda had text uh, earlier this morning and asked us to be praying um, I know Brother Sheldon has asked us to be praying for him today. He's just kind of not feeling quite right. But, you know, we believe that God's a healing God. Amen? Amen. And uh, we, we believe that God is, if he was ever a healer, he's always a healer. Amen? And so we're going to uh, thank God for that. I also want to thank those of you who uh, helped with Sister Bonnie as she went through her procedure last week. As you can see, she's here. Uh, in her words, not mine, she's a tough old bird. That's what she told us. <laughs> And uh, if you didn't know that already, you need to come meet Sister Bonnie because you apparently have never met her in your life. So anyway, but we're so thankful she's able to be here with us. Well, but God's got his hand on you. That's the important thing. And so we're thankful for the, the good report uh, with that. Um, if you have a need, I just want you to uh, signify that by lifting up your hand, if you would. If you are, are able to stand. I know uh, you sat down. You were like, wait a minute, people sat down? But uh, if, if you're able to stand as we go to the Lord in prayer today, we're going to believe that God is going to meet every one of these needs according to his will and according to his plan and according to his power amen let's pray together almighty father we come to you today thanking you god for another opportunity we have to gather together in your house to worship you and to lift up and praise your holy name god i thank you lord that that you meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory god that that there's nothing that we can face nothing that we can go against father that we will not see your hand come in at the right time at the right moment to fulfill your plan and god though there may be times we don't understand lord what we do know is that you have what is best for us right in your mind and in your heart and lord we just want to follow that we want to follow your heart lord would your spirit just descend upon us today in the name of jesus as we lift you up as we worship you and as we glorify your holy name lord would you just come upon us father receive honor from what we have to offer today receive honor from praise receive honor from our worship and from our prayers god and lord i lift up every need that has been represented in this house today lord if you have ever been a healer you are always a healer if you've ever been a provider you are always a provider in the name of jesus 
Lord, I just pray that you will do these things according to your will in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for my brother right now. Lord, you see what he's going through in his body, but Lord, I know that you are a healer. I pray that you will touch him, God. I pray that you will anoint him, Father. I pray that even now he will feel the Holy Spirit come in and begin to strengthen him in his time of weakness, God. You are great and you are greatly to be praised. We worship you. We give you thanks and we give you praise for all that you do. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. Remain standing as we go to a time of praise and worship today. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring sacrifice of praise.
Yes, you can. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, musicians, go ahead and play that song again. If you would, God put it in my heart. I don't know it, but I know we've sung a song about the wall. Might have been in the nursery this time. I don't remember. There you go. The same back. And march around because they, they march around. I don't know, but they march around the city seven times. Am I right? Yes. Don't be getting in my sermon too much, though. <laughs> well, I tell you what, let's all stand. And anybody that will, anybody that can, if you want to just begin to march around this sanctuary, but listen, don't just walk and say, okay, I'm going to count. One, two. I want, as you are, are walking... I want you to begin to praise. You know, my thing is this. We have been praying for a move of God in this church. But the thing is, sometimes the move of God will come once we're willing to move ourselves. You know, it doesn't do you any good to pray, God, give us a move of God, and then you sit with your arms crossed. Now, if you're not able, that's a different story. I completely understand that. But you pray where you are. But as they sing this song, and as you begin to walk around, I want you to be praising. I want you to say, God, let it start in me. Let a revival start in me. Listen, I, I'm telling you right now, something is going to happen with this walk I'm going to be doing. That God is going to do something incredible, and I believe that with all of my heart. But that doesn't mean we've got to wait until the end of the month to see a move of God. That doesn't mean we've got to wait to the end of the month before we lift him up and we, we, we praise his name. So I thank my brother for coming forward and telling us what's on his heart. And you might say, well, I didn't feel that. Well, maybe you need to feel that. But if you're willing to walk, I want you to begin to walk right now as they sing this. And I want you to begin to praise. And if it happens before we get to the seventh time, then so be it. Everybody walk in the same direction, though, which way you go in. <laughs> Everybody walk in the same direction. Begin, just begin to praise him. Just begin to lift him up right now in the name of Jesus.
But I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do. Well, I don't know what But I hope you and pray came you came to, to worship do, God. But I, came I hope and pray you came to Lord. lift up the name of Jesus Christ in this house today. I don't know what you I came hope and pray to you do, came not only to receive from God, to but to give Lord. unto God all glory and all honor and all praise and all power. Hallelujah. Praise him, church. Praise, praise him. Lord. Praise him as you're walking. Hallelujah. Praise. Give it over to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had Glory a talk. To God. Oh, I had a talk with the Lord today. And he said to praise his name. I had a talk with the Lord today. He said to praise his name. Well, I had a talk with the Lord today. He said to praise his name. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know. Well, I don't know what you came to do. But I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't know how many times you've gone around, but I want to read this to you, and I want us to shout. In Psalm 47, 1, it says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph, for the Lord is most high. It, it, most high is several. He is a great king over all the earth. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of victory in this house today. Somebody shout unto God and say that the the sick are going to be healed, that the, the lost are going to be saved, that those that are bound are going to be delivered. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph in this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Would you just praise him in this place? Would you just lift up your hands and praise him in this place right where you are? Hallelujah, Father. Lord, we just worship you in this place, God. Lord, we believe that by our shouting with triumph, Father, that we're shaking the very foundations of hell. God, we believe by our shouting with triumph, Father, that we are declaring to the enemy that we are victorious through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. that today. Oh, glory, glory, 
Come on, sing it again. Oh, glory, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down. Now I'm feeling better. Now I'm feeling so much better. Sit down for just a moment, though, because I'm going to tell you the real short version of this sermon. We're going to go right back to the altar. Amen. In Joshua chapter 6, verses 15, 16, and verse 20, it says, And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and come past the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they come past the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. So the people shouted, down to verse 20, So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up, into the city every man straight before him and they took the city i'm preaching today about shouting while the walls are still standing let me tell you what happened i was walking and, and just praying and I, one of the things i've been able to do since getting ready for this walk is i've been able to pray as i've been walking and i've been having church as I have been walking by myself and I've been praying and God has been speaking to me and I was in the middle of praying about something and I was I was saying because God I know that you're the God who all you have to do is say peace be still and the storm can be calmed God I know that you're the God that even when you're in the darkest deepest part of the prison at midnight at the darkest hour of the day that all it takes is our praise and suddenly the chains are going to fall and then I said something and it hit me in a way after I said it it was like God had knocked me in the head with something and I said God you're even the God who caused the walls around Jericho to fall flat after your children had shouted with victory and it dawned on me at that moment that the shout did not come when the walls broke, when the walls fell down, the shout did not come when the answer to the prayer came. You know, it's very easy for us to shout. It's very easy for us to praise when we see something great happen. I know that as we've been praying for Kayla and the baby, that when I heard that the baby was fine, that the baby checked out just great, I know I gave God praise for that. And we should. We do need to be giving God praise for those things. But we also need to understand is that our praise and our declaration of faith to God saying that we believe that he's the God that he says he is has to come while the walls still stand before us you see the children of Israel all they were told was what Joshua said he said you're gonna walk around once and then we're gonna go home then the next day you're gonna walk around again and then we're gonna go home on the third day you're gonna walk around and then we're gonna go home and he kept saying that he said but let me tell you what's gonna happen on the seventh day the seventh day is different we're gonna walk around seven times on the seventh day but at the end of that we're not going home at the end of that we're walking into the promise that God has given us because you need to shout when we come to the end of it and what did he say he said shout for God has given you the city here's the thing at the end of the seventh lap and when they shouted unto God with a voice of triumph the walls were still standing 
The soldiers that were inside were still alive and were ready to face the Israelites. They were ready to take down the Israelites. But they still shouted with the declaration that God had given them the city. They still shouted with victory even though there was no victory to be seen. All they saw were walls. But it was after that declaration, it was after that shout that the walls fell down flat. The people that were in Jericho that were saying, these Israelites, they've all lost their mind. They don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're just out here trying to lose some weight or something, and they're just out here. And, and what do they think is going to happen just with them walking around our walls? They think they're just going to fall down on their own or something. And on that seventh day, you know that they were all gathered around. Hey, look at these stupid Israelites. They forgot they already went around, and they're going around another time. Oh, look, they're going around a third time. Boy, these guys must be the heat. They must have lost their mind. And I can imagine... On that seventh time, because, you know, the walls of Jericho, they say that they would that they would have chariot races on top of the walls. We're not talking about a little bit of sheetrock here. We're talking about something that was a fortress. We're talking about something that seemed impenetrable. We're talking about something that seemed unbreakable. And they shouted out with victory. And you know that the people at Jericho, there had to be several of them standing on the walls. And as they were shouting, they probably just began to laugh until all of a sudden they realized that the ground below them was beginning to shake that something was wrong with this wall that they had put so much uh, so much confidence in that something was wrong with this wall that had protected them for so long and be before they knew it that wall fell flat to the ground and the Israelites walked into the promise of God now here's what you and I need to understand today there are promises that God has given us that are in his word that we need to declare in the name of Jesus the word of God says that Abraham was a man in, in Romans 4 it talks about Abraham being a man that would speak of those things that weren't as though they were. Now, some people will take that verse and try to twist it around and pervert it and try to say, that means I can tell God whatever I want. As long as I say it, God has to give it to me. No, my friend, that's not what that means. What it means is that the promises of God are yea and amen. What it means is that when God says you're healed, then you're healed in the name of Jesus. What it means is that when God said he's going to provide for you, that you're going to be provided for in the name of Jesus. But it takes more than you just saying that you believe. It takes more than you waiting for God to do something. In, in John verse 20, uh, or chapter 20, verse 29, Jesus is talking to Thomas. After Thomas, and everybody gets on to Thomas and talks bad about Thomas. Oh, he doubted. Well, wouldn't you have doubted? You saw him die. He was in the grave for three days. Did you really think that you were going to see him? Of course, you're going to have some questions and some doubts. But what Jesus says to, to Thomas in John 20, verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. But listen to this next, next part. Blessed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Let me tell you something that happened, and I shared this on Wednesday. I've, I've been diabetic now for several years, and I was praying uh, on that day that, uh, uh, that the Lord brought this to me, and I, I began to declare things. I began to declare revival for Oak Grove. I began to declare that souls were going to be won to Jesus Christ through this ministry, whether it be Sunday school, women, youth, the preacher, whatever it is, that God was going to use Oak Grove to win this community. I began to declare these things because that's what the Word of God says. And one of the things that I declared, I declared that I would be healed, that I would be off of insulin uh, in the name of Jesus. Now I told God, I said that within, within two years, or one year, that I would either be off of my insulin or it would at least be cut in half in the name of Jesus. I'm believing that. The next morning, I'm talking to my, uh, on a tele endocrinologist. I'm telling her about my numbers. I'm telling her about everything that's going on. And I'm ready for her to get mad at me because I had gone two days without taking my, my shot that night. I had gone two days and I was ready for her to get on to me and say, mister, you need to keep taking your medicine. You know what her response was to me? She said, put it away. You don't need the insulin anymore. Don't take the insulin anymore. You're doing fine. I'm taking that away from you. 
I gave God a year and he took less than 24 hours to take what he had promised me and to show me that he was faithful. Let me tell you something though. I didn't just pray, Lord, would you please heal me, God? Would you please help me, Jesus? And then go home and eat a whole box of Oreos. I didn't do that. What I did was I stepped up and I declared by the promises of the word of God that I would be healed in the name of Jesus. I declared it. My friends, stand with me if you're able. I I know you've got something in your life that you've got to declare. You've got to, I'm not talking about ask. I'm not talking about I'm not saying, God, would you please, if you got time, if you think you're able. I'm talking about you've got something in your life that you are ready to declare. I declare healing in the name of Jesus. I declare that my children will be, will be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I declare that me and my family are going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and the power thereof with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I declare that God is going to provide for my every financial need. I declare that there is nothing that God has promised me that will be withheld from me by the enemy. Are you ready to make a declaration? I can tell you right now, I wasn't there, but I know that the children of Israel when they walked around that seventh time and he said, shout, for God has given you the city. I know none of them said, yay. I know none of them said, that sounds like a great idea, God. They shouted with everything that was in them. What are you willing to do to get what God has promised you? These have already come up. I didn't even have to ask them to come up. You know why? Because they're determined that they're going to receive what God has for them. And I thank God that they are at that place because when you get to that place of determination, then the next thing to come is a time of declaration. Are you ready to declare that your walls that are still standing right now are about to fall flat are you ready to declare musicians just play something I don't even care what just begin to play right now are you ready to declare that what God has promised you that it is going to come forth in the name of Jesus are you ready to declare that you don't have to go without what God has said but instead it's time for you to shout for God has given you that healing shout for God has blessed you God is going to fill you. He's going to restore you. Shout for God has given you all the promises of his word in the name of Jesus. Shout for the Holy Spirit is going to descend upon you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Begin to shout now in the name of Jesus under the power of the Holy Spirit. Shout for God has given it to you. Declare it in the name of Jesus. Yes, I know the walls are still up. Yes, I know that the obstacles are still in the way. But I know that God is faithful. That God is faithful. And he is going to answer these needs in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Right now, God, let your Holy Spirit just descend, Father, as we declare your glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. As we There'll declare your glory, as we declare your power by the Holy Spirit, glory. God. All the promises you have given, all the promises in your word, all that you have spoken to us by your power and your authority in the name of Jesus. Right now, God. Now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak healing, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, not my power. Not my authority, but by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, would you just descend upon these, Father. Let your Spirit minister to them, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for Brother Legrand right now, God. We declare healing for him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, the wall is still standing, but you are greater than the wall. The wall is still standing, but I feel the foundation shaking now as we shout out for victory, as we declare with a voice of triumph, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Come on, church, don't give up. Shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills when we don't give up, church. Which we've heard the story. They'll be shouting Those that endure to the end are going to receive the reward of God. Those that endure to the end are going to be the ones that are going to receive the blessings. Going to be the ones that are going to receive the promises in the name of Jesus. 
Oh, if they had stopped at six, if they had stopped at six laps and said, this has got to be good enough, they never would have seen victory. Lord, I just pray. And he said to praise his name. God, as they give themselves to you, as they declare with victory, God. I had a talk with the Lord oh, today. And he said to praise his name. I had a talk with the Lord today. And he said to praise his name. I want you to understand something, all right? I want you to understand something as we're, as we're in this time. This is not a time for asking. Today is about declaring. It's about claiming that which God has already promised you. Today is not about saying, God, would you? God, could you? God, if you don't mind. We all have enough promises, we all have enough word from God that he has spoken to us that we have yet to see to come to pass. And when we don't see those come to pass, we begin to question whether we ever heard from God in the first place. Have you ever been in that house? Have you ever been in that place where you, God has promised you, I'm going to do this, I'm going to bring your child to me, I'm going to fill you with the Holy Ghost, I'm going to heal you, whatever it is, and we don't see it come to pass, and Satan begins to tell us, well, you're just out of your mind, you were thinking that on your own. God never said that to you that was something you came up with on your own we all go through those times where we begin to doubt what God spoke to us but my question to you is this if God had not spoken to it to you would it really be still that prevalent in your heart would it really be something that would be that strong in your spirit that you just can't get away from it if God had not spoken those words to you wouldn't it have been something that just would have faded away like just a, a, a temporary notion that would would have come up so today is not about praying God could you please if you don't mind if you have some time if you, if you don't mind doing this for me today is God you have already said that I've gotten the city you've already said that this is mine and today what I'm doing is I'm not asking for it again because you've already given it to me today I'm declaring that it is mine regardless if I see it or not regardless if the enemy wants me to be around it or not today I declare freedom is mine declare today I declare my children's salvation today I declare me being filled with the Holy Ghost today I declare that I'm healed whatever it is today is you staring that wall, staring right at that wall and saying, the wall is coming down. The wall is coming down and I'm going to walk in to my promise. How many of you are ready to walk in to your promise right now would you just lift up your hands and would you just say God Lord take my hand and walk me into my promise God Lord I declare it now Father I'm going to begin to walk towards the wall even though the wall's still standing I'm going to begin to walk towards the wall because before I get there God I know you're going to make the way for me before I get there God I know you're going to cause the wall to fall flat before I even get there God I know that everything's going to be prepared all I've got to do is be obedient and walk in the declaration of the faith of Jesus Christ and what you have told me. You know what? You may not see it right now. It may seem impossible right now. But let me tell you that God is the God of the impossible and that he will do what nobody else can do. Somebody give him praise in this house today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and sing that again if well, you would. Hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. Yes, look what the Lord has done. Oh, he healed my body. He touched my mind. Oh, he saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. And each day just the same. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Praise him this morning. Well, look what the Lord has done. Just look 
Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Well, look what the Lord has done. Sing it like you mean it. Look what the Lord has done. Well, He healed my body. He's touched my mind. time would you just offer up the Lord a praise <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> glory to God glory to God amen you can be seated for a few moments hallelujah hallelujah I tell you brother Sheldon's been wanting me to get out of that suit jacket for some time well you got it brother Praise the Lord. No, I didn't forget about the offering. We'll get to it. <laughs> Listen, I have felt in my spirit for several days that God wanted to do something amazing in this place. And I believe that there was some that got what they were looking for today. I believe there were some that felt the walls begin to break. Felt the chains begin to fall. And if you're in this place and you did not feel that way, if you're in this place and you say, I'm in the same place as I was when I walked in, that's got to be on you. Because the waters have been troubled. I am so excited about the future of this church. And when I say the future, I'm not talking about 20 years down the road. I'm talking about within the next 30 days, within the next two months. I've actually been thinking about the fact that we have, you know, several special services coming up. You know, we have homecoming in September and we have, uh, you know, we, we have uh, the veterans. We're going to be acknowledging the veterans of one service. You know, we got Mission Sunday, the first of every month, first Sunday of every month. And we got the Christmas play we're going to be getting ready for and all that kind of thing. And I've just been thinking, I hope everybody's going to be okay if those things have to be postponed because we're in the midst of such a revival that we can't, just can't stop going. Now, I know that some of you might think, well, I mean, we'd, we'd have all right. It'd be all right for us to have one service and for us to be able to do that. And we don't want to disrupt what has always been done. But I'm telling you that the revival I'm praying for it's not a week-long revival. I'm sorry to disappoint you if you think that's what it is. The revival I'm praying for is not what happened today. This is a ripple in the water. I'm ready for the tsunami. The revival that I'm praying for, the revival that I'm walking for, is something that's going to be lasting. The word I've been using is transformational. Look it up if you don't know what it means. But it's something that's going to transform this church. And I will warn you, there may be some that may not like the transformation. But the only way that you're going to keep a tree healthy is if you have to do some pruning sometimes. Now, I'm not threatening anybody. I want everybody to stay. But what I'm saying is this. If you don't want God to move and change people's lives for God to do miracles that we've only heard stories about. If you don't want God to bring in the undesirables and change them, you're about to become very, very uncomfortable. Because God is about to pour out on this place what has God told you, preacher? Just what his word says. If my people that are called.
call by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I'm looking at a big old wall right now when I think about this community. When I think about getting people out there right up here. I'm looking at a big old wall that seems like it's unscalable, it's unmovable, it's unbreakable, it's unshakable. But then I think about the God that I serve. I think about the God that I serve, and I think about what He sees when He sees that wall. I think about what God sees when he sees that wall. Stop looking at it with your eyes. Look at it with God's eyes. What is God seeing when he sees that wall? He's looking at it like, oh, I got to move this out of the way. Let me get this out of the way. You know what? I'm not the one that put that there, and that's not where I want it to be, so I'm going to get rid of it right now. Stop looking at your walls through your own eyes. Stop looking at your walls through the eyes of your neighbors that are trying to tell you you might as well give up on that. That ain't never going to happen. Just pray that God will have mercy and all that sort of thing. Stop looking at the wall through your own eyes. Begin to look at the wall through the eyes of God and see just how insignificant that obstacle is. All right, I'm only going to preach twice. I'll tell you what, ushers, as we dismiss, will you just be at the doors and, and let people give as they give, or as they walk through? Um, because I just feel like what we need to do now is just one more time, if you'll stand. And kids, I hope you're okay. You're going to have the prettiest children's church teacher that's ever walked the face of the earth. I was going to be teaching you today. It was your day, right? Okay, I'm making sure. But um, you'll get her another time. Don't worry about it. God had a work to do today. Amen. Amen. Almighty Father, we cannot thank you enough for what you have done in this house. God, we cannot thank you for what has begun in this house. God, we're ending the service, but we're not done. <clears throat> this service is coming to an end, but we're not done with what you're going to do. Lord, this is the first ripple in the water. This is the first vibration in the earthquake. God, I'm believing that lasting, powerful revival is going to come to Oak Grove. I declare it by the power and authority of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that lives within me. Lord, I declare that those that were at this altar, God, that what you did in them is going to remain steadfast in Jesus' name. And as we leave this house today, I pray that all week we will have an excitement and an anticipation for the next time that we can be together and that we can worship as a church body. And Lord, give us an excitement and an anticipation of what you are going to do in this church, God. Don't just show it to me as a pastor. God, birth it in the hearts of your people so that we can be of one mind and one accord. And when the day comes and we hear a sound, as of a mighty rushing wind, God, we know that your presence is going to fill this place and that we will be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. God, we ask that you'll dismiss us from this place, but never, ever from your presence, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Please make sure you give uh, on your way out. Be praying because God is going to do something incredible. Amen.